Okay, for this lesson, we are going to take our five references that I've ordered already. So on top, we have the foreground element. It's not cut out yet. It's just that photo reference sized and placed with just simple transform tools. And I've rasterized it, right, by right-clicking and rasterizing. So it's no longer a smart object. So I can delete from it should I need to. Underneath that, I've got the next closest thing to the viewer, what I called my close barrels. Underneath that, I've got the big coral. And underneath that, I've got these blocks, which I've already started to cut out. At the end of the last video, I used the magic wand tool to cut out the ocean behind them. But if I zoom in using Command Plus, I can see it's not the most perfect cutout, right? I just use magic wand and delete. So we're going to learn how to to refine that a little bit more as we continue. And then I have little noise, little debris that needs to continue. And I obviously need to get rid of that diver, right? And then behind that, I have my background plate. Now my furthest background plate, which is just for this open water at the top, oops, right? Uh, I don't need to cut out anything there, right? It doesn't make any sense to cut out from the background when things just cover it up. So as I'm piecing these together, we're going to see how we do what's called rough cutting. And there's a few different ways to do it. But the most basic way is to zoom in, make sure you're on the right layer. If you're really, really worried about this, and if you're new to really working with layers, it might be a good idea to lock your background layer. So what you do is you select it and you click the little padlock lock your sketch layer, lock your background. First by unlocking it as a background layer and then by locking it again. And that prevents you from accidentally erasing from the wrong layer or moving stuff. And then as you go through, as you turn them on and you're finished with it, finished working on it for the moment, you can lock it and then go back and unlock it. So I'm just working on Cement City. It's the only layer I can see that I can work on. And I'm just gonna take the lasso tool and I can use my mouse and just select and delete, just like we did with the cartoon jumble. Or I can use my tablet. And my tablet will allow me to get in there and do a little bit more precise a job. So this is what rough cutting is. See this little piece of rebar sticking out or coral or whatever it is. Rough cutting means I can get close to it without losing anything I might want to use. And the, uh, the stylus really helps with that. So for instance, inside this rebar or coral, I can just cut and delete. And that's a lot smoother than if I do, for little things like that, something like the magic wand with contiguous and a tolerance of 32, which is the default, and delete that. The problem with doing that is notice it took too much away. I guess I can show you that by showing you there. Versus, and that's because the, the color of those pixels is so similar, that the magic wand can't differentiate. So that's why I use my stylus. But it's still a rough cut because look at all those jagged pixels. When you just use the lasso and then hit delete, all the computer can do is delete pixels. And so you're going to leave with a lot of rough edges. I will show you later how to refine those and soften those. But first, we just want to get comfortable rough cutting everything. And if you have debris like this, it's nice to have your white sketch behind. You can see that debris really clearly. You just, just kind of batch select it and delete. I've got this fish. I don't want the fish. I'm just going to cut it out. You don't want anything living in these background plates because we're going to animate on top of them later, or at least we want the option to. And we're going to be adding a creature into them for assignment three. We want that creature to appear like it's moving or that it has life. So we don't want other things competing for that attention. Now notice this. This is the other thing that's nice about rough cutting. That photo reference cut off right there. 
but if I rough cut, I can make my own edge of that coral. I am not bound and limited by the photo reference. You are powerful beyond measure in the digital art realm. You can shape reality as you see fit. Also, you'll notice this happens a lot when you use the magic wand to select and delete. You'll get little halos. So I get little halos of dark blue water. And from far away, that doesn't look bad. But when you're zooming in, that's you're seeing it at print resolution. You'll see what will actually print. So using the stylus and just being kind of confident, you can get a better cutout. Now, this is veering close to refined cutting out because this coral is, is sharp edged. But I'm just trying to show you the difference between the rough cut, which is this, and a refined edge, which we'll work on later. So we're dealing with all kind of hard edges right now. Okay, so that rough cut in general looks pretty good. That's one element. I'm gonna turn on the background plate behind that. And then I'll see the other thing that happens in a rough cut. Remember I have my guides. The guides are the sides of my sketch. So that's the composition I'm trying to fill. Notice that my coral city gets really cut off there. I mean, that looks awful. And this whole bottom line looks awful. Now, am I gonna spend a lot of time trying to cut that out and make that not look straight? No, because I have things on top of it that are going to cover it up anyway. So don't spend a lot of time cutting things out that aren't gonna be visible. So I go from the back to the front, right? And I go from the top to the bottom, because in general, most landscapes, the foreground is near the bottom edge and the background is near the top edge. So this is my next big element. But before I move to it, I am going to lock my cement city. Notice I'm doing everything at 100% opacity in the layer. You can get in trouble if you don't do that. And so now onto the big coral. I have a lot to remove very quickly. I could just use the lasso and do this kind of thing, but I can also use the magic wand and delete out these pixels that I'm fairly confident are very, very different than that yellowish coral. And it leaves a little debris, but it's pretty good. If I wanna do a batch selection, and today is a lot about learning uh, new and better ways to select. I can hold down shift and just keep adding to the magic wands contiguous selection. So these are similar pixels that are touching each other. And you see, it will just keep adding them in. Now what I love about organic references like sea coral is that even if I do end up deleting a little bit from the coral, I can always kind of redraw its edge. It's organic. It's not like cutting the head off the Statue of Liberty, something man-made that people will know. Because we are using these pixels. We are not showing them any kind of respect. <laughs> we are using them for our own purposes. It's kind of cool, the shadows in the water when they're just cut out. But this isn't a painting, this isn't um, an abstract composition. This is trying to be a believable fantasy landscape that follows its own logic. So anywhere I have kind of cutouts from the water, I'm gonna try to cut it out within reason. A trick that professionals lean on a lot for background design is atmosphere. Like moist air, fog, water is definitely a very strong atmosphere, right? 
So now in rough cutting, that was just all with the magic wand. I can see that I have some debris here I can get rid of. I have some debris here I can get rid of. I can redraw that really sharp edge. Now notice this is debris, but it's outside the parameters of my sketch. So I don't really need to worry about all this stuff because those guidelines show me what the actual visible part of my composition is. But before I go too much further, I might think I like the lighting on this, which is light on this side, dark on that side. And I like how this coral is matching that light on this side, dark on this side. But I might decide I want to move this whole thing in a little bit more, see how that looks. And then I decide, no, I like to reveal more of the man-made stuff. Yeah, and this feels about right. And then I have to look at the edges, always looking at the edges for where things overlap. This stuff is a problem. So that's why I can turn off the layers behind and actually see on my sketch or on the gray around my sketch, what to delete away from the layer. Just like you would cut pictures from a magazine and layer them together. We're doing the same sort of thing. Now also notice this, that's an artificial hard edge. So what I'm going to do is use my lasso and redraw it redefine the edge of that coral just for now. And then I'm not sure what to do with the bottom edge there. It depends how much gets covered up. But from here on up, I have three layers they're rough, roughly cut. I don't have anything too obviously living. There are little fish there. And I can, if I have time, I can uh, clone stamp those out or play with those later. But this kind of thing happens, which kind of bugs me. Remember when I cut out that rebar so nicely and I really liked that element? Well, now it's covered up by the coral. So what are my options? Well, because this isn't a man-made element, it's an organic element, I can hit Command T and I can scale it, I can warp it, I can make it fit better within the composition. I have the power. Maybe I don't want that big coral to be quite so big. And then what I like about using transform tools is you just hit return and you look at it and you see, okay, I see what's going on, but I hit command Z. Okay, that's what was before. And then you see, do I like what that change did? And I think I do. It gives it a little bit more, your eye can kind of swim around it a little bit more. I also need to play with the color of the coral so that it, it works in a little bit, but that comes later. I'm just rough cutting for now. So now I've rough cut that layer, three layers down. I'm going to lock it, move to the next. Now these are man-made barrels. So the rough cut here is going to be really simple. The refined cut's going to be hard. The rough cut is simply take my lasso and treat them like they're stickers and give them a little bit of space on all edges. like so. Right. So now instead, there's a few ways you can use selection. This is new. If I hit delete right now, what would happen? I lose the barrels. That's the opposite of what I want to have happen, right? So instead, what I can do is I can go up to the select option and I can say inverse the selection. 
So swap.